welcome to my craft room. I'm going to show you today how to make these cute votive covers using the movers and shapers die for the big shot. Why look at this. They think they can run under there to hide and I won't know they're there. I'll deal with you later. This is my original idea. and I came up with this when I was thinking about windows that you cut with this die and where you might put those windows. And I came up with the idea of a votive cover. In order to do this project, you need a piece of cardstock that is 11 inches by 4 and a quarter, four pieces of vellum cardstock that are roughly 2 and a half inches by 2 and a half inches, as well as the movers and shapers die for the big shot. This is the die, and it comes with the curly label window already with it. You can also buy sets of windows. This is the set that's in the big catalog and it has a heart and a scallop circle and a word, well, modern label and a star. And then there's the set that's in the holiday mini that has the ornament, the circle, another shape, and this bird, which I haven't figured out what to do with yet. Alright, but I'm going to, for this purpose, use the, mod, the curly label that comes with the when movers and shapers die. Get out of there. Ugh. Okay, some brilliant person came up with the idea of putting a piece of grid paper in here, and that helps you line up your die inside the, inside the big die, the little die inside the big die. And so what I'm going to do with my movers and shapers is I'm going to stick it in there, and I'm going to line it up, and I'm going to snug it right up against the middle. I'm going to make sure it's right in the center and it's ready to go. Take my big shot. I've got my extended cutting plates. And this particular die puts a lot of wear and tear on your cutting plate. So you have to be careful with it. I don't know if you can see, but I'm going to take and put my cardstock right in the bottom and then the first place that's going in is going to be this foam side. That'll keep it from creeping too much when you're rolling it through. And then I'm going to put this on and I'm going to try to vary the spot where the um, sides of the die are going to cut because it does cut a deep group in, groove in there and then your blade tends to get stuck. And I've cut a very nice window and it'll trim off any extra cardstock you have. I'm going to remove that. Now to put my next hole, I'm simply going to turn the cardstock 180 degrees so that the window is on the foam side and I'm going to put my cutting mat back on it and I'm going to send it back through. And that gives me my second window in my die, now here, in my cardstock. Now here comes the clever part, as if this wasn't clever enough. I'm going to take and move this so that it is centered over the previous hole in one side. I'm going to hold it down there with this hand, and I'm going to move this down so that it ends up right there. And I'm going to make sure that's centered and it's straight. I'm going to do that again. And you'll notice that it leaves a mark. The uh, magnetic part of the die leaves a mark. So you can look down through that and line it up. And you can make sure that everything is copacetic. Looks good. I'm going to put my cardstock back in place. And again, run this through the machine. See where I'm going with this? All right. One more hole. I have three of my holes cut. And I'm going to turn around again one more time. I'm 
going to send it back through the last time. And I have four equally spaced holes and one nice score mark. Now I need to score the other areas. And I'm going to line this up on my Fiskars so that I can see that the two windows are evenly on either side of the center of this opening and I'm just going to score right down there. And I'm going to do the same thing here. So looking to, through the ruler I can see exactly where the center is going to be, where the windows need to be placed. And measuring this, I find that it is roughly two and a half inches between these two marks. So I need to score the ends now. Sometimes it depends on, whoops, wrong way, depends on which die you're using. Sometimes they'll not be two and a half inches, they'll be a different measurement. And so you're going to have to, depending on which window you're using, you're going to have to measure it every time to make see how far away you need to put these side score marks here. Sometimes there won't be, um, like on this one, there wasn't much left over. So actually I had to make a little hinge to, to attach these. So I have a half inch over here and about a half inch over here. And I really only need one of those to um, attach the two sides together. So I'm going to go ahead and put my cutting blade in here and I'm going to uh, cut, cut one of them off. So that when I fold this, I have four sides and I have a tab for attaching them. Now that's really clever, but you would want to, before you did that, you would want to put the top border on, which you can do with one of these punches. And I've already done this, and I've already stamped and on I this punched one. the top, and it's all ready pretty much to go together, except I need to put the um, vellum windows in. To do that, I'm going to put adhesive around the openings of all the windows, and I've already done most of this one, but you can just run your adhesive around each window and across the top so that there's something sticky there. And I've already stamped some windows and colored and the in the back. thing is you can see right through the window to where you're going to put these. I'm going to put Joseph over here. And I'm going to put the three kings over here. And I can see the window through the back so that I know about where I'm placing the image. And Mary and the baby Jesus are going to go right here. And you can see it's not even all the way around just because of the way I stamped them, but you can probably manage better than me. And then we're going to put our angel on this side. Okay, then it's just a matter of folding it up and putting, taking the sticky strip here that I've already put on my tab off very carefully sticking that together. And now I have a beautiful, a beautiful votive cover. And if I put a candle inside, it's going to look really, really, really gorgeous. And then I can just put a little bit of ribbon around the bottom like I did these to finish it off. And that's how I made my votive candle cover. Thank you for watching my video. Look for more ideas at jantink.com. Bye.